I am Gustavo Rondon Cordova from Venezuela, director of La Familia, the film that you are about to see. Um, this is my first feature film, it's a co-production between Venezuela, Chile and Norway. So I'm really happy to be here in Scandinavia. I just came from Oslo. Now I'm here in this wonderful festival and I'll be here uh, after the screening for a Q&A, so please feel free to stay and we can have a conversation on the topics or, or everything you would like to know about the film. So enjoy the screening and see you after so many. Thank you. Mete tus mierdas en el bolso, Pedro. Apúrate. Camina. ¿Tú crees que alguien te va a ayudar allá? Cada quien anda en lo suyo. Mira, necesito un favor. No quiero problemas con malandros en mi casa. ¿Por qué tú siempre te dejas joder? Por tú tirarte al lado, hombrecito, no metiste en esto. Te íbamos con tu mamá a una piscina. El que actúa rápido es el que gana, yo. Arranque y agarra tu cuchillo de malandro. Thank you very much, Gustavo. Uh, Rondon Cordova, was that correct? Yes, it's correct. Oh, Rondon Cordova. Thank you very much uh, for this movie, La Familia, that we all saw. Um, first, this setting, we have this boy uh, in Caracas, which we all heard of quite a lot on the news and the situation there. Um, you are from Caracas? Can you tell me about what impact the city has on this movie? When I live in Caracas, there is not that common today <laughs> to find Venezuelans living in Caracas. There. Well, um, first of all, thanks for staying for this Q&A. Um, I was um, working in the theme of family since my uh, short films. And when I had this idea for this film, I decided that I want to have an, an additional character, and that it was Caracas. And this is a city uh, where I grew up and I live, and I love it as much as I hate it. And because it has become like a very harsh place to be in the recent years, and probably because it's not the same place where I grew up. Um, Caracas is a big city, I mean, five, five million people plus two small, small cities that are very connected. So it's a lot of people. And I really wanted to have a, the, the place as a, not only as a context, but also as a character. It creates the circumstances that the characters are living, and at the same time, those circumstances are the same that actually connect them, that 
make this re-encounter possible. So I was all the time like really uh, trying to to put the, the this texture, but this this way of living in in the film. Because the family lives in the blocks, as it's called in the movie. The boy from the fight who gets uh, cut, he lives in the slum. And then we see the upper class Caracas through working places. And so you bring a lot of the city in. Uh, yeah, I, I tried that because um, I think Caracas, like most of the cities in Latin America, has a huge contrast between the upper and lower classes. But um, recently in Caracas, like everything started to spread a little bit. So it's like this lower neighborhoods and are in, in many different places but the, but but the most I mean the thing that I wanted to 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 have on the film was actually that it doesn't matter how different we think we are, in a certain way we're living in a very similar way. Because we are all really into this violence or violent way of behaving and relating to each other. So that was the the reason why I um, wrote a character that I could actually go through all these uh, different um, um, classes and and, and, and and to to have to deal with all of them because I really if if I'm correct you can see actually like everybody behaving in the same way. Very interesting to hear you talk about that. Um, and there are, of course, this boy uh, act, who is a non-actor and who makes a great uh, part uh, in this movie called Regi Reyes. Regi Reyes. Regi Reyes. How did you find him? Well, um, I, from the really beginning, I knew that I was going to work with a trained and professional actor for the father and with non with a non-actor for the kids. Uh, so it, it was mainly because there are not like really good actors, like uh, kid actors in Venezuela, and the few ones are like really into this um, TV kind of, 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 of performance that I didn't want. I was looking for someone who could understand the, the, the story, and bring also a lot of texture to the film. I mean, there are a few Venezuelans here, and they probably uh, can see that this these kids are real. I mean, they are not pretending to be to be there and to and to be like speaking in that way. And some of that is sometimes is lost in the translation, and but it's there. And it was for me. I mean, I I needed really needed to believe in these characters and so I I decided to have those kids. So we made a long casting process and I had two casting directors working with me and we, I mean, they went to many, many uh, lower class neighborhoods. We went, they went to, to film, to, to schools, they went to sport fields, many different places. So we saw around 500 kids. And we um, we invited around 15 to 20 to a acting tool workshop. It was on vacation, so it was a perfect plan for the parents of these kids to have an, an activity for the vacations. And that was six weeks um, from Monday to Saturday, five hours each day. And I never s told them that I was the director of the film. So I was supposed to be like a camera assistant to these casting directors and I became like really close to them. I went like every three days there. And um, I was, I started making some camera testers. And one day like, I mean, my, my goal was that I was going to find the main actor there in the making. But it was risky because we had already started the pre-production. So like two weeks before starting, I had three, like uh, I had three kids 
And when I made these tests, I saw something in Reggie that was connected with his eyes, his body, that it was right in the moment that I wanted to, to have. Yes, I wanted to express uh, a kid that is becoming a, a not a, I mean, it's something like in the border of becoming a, a, a man, if, if that can be said. And I mean, this was a very impressive. I mean, this kid stood in front of the camera like for four minutes, doing nothing, saying nothing, and I felt the energy that I just wanted to have in him. And so I told him, that you are in the film, that's it. I never told him that he was the main uh, character in the film. And I told the main actor not to come to this workshop and anything like that. So they never knew each other before we started the shoot. And the shoot was in, uh, what uh, we had it in chronological order, so we had the chance to, to grow all together. So the kid started to shoot. He never had like too much idea of it. He said, and the second week he asked me, okay, when are we going to start the shoot? And I said, we've been shooting for two weeks. And so when the father comes in the film, it's exactly when the actor came into the, the shoot too. So this relationship that is happening in the film, it was happening also behind the cameras. And he went through all the way. So they really became close friends. And the good thing about having a professional actor is that he uh, brought the techniques for the acting. And if you see those fights, they look like really strong. And, and, and so the, what the actor did was to protect that kid all the time. Because, I mean, he was a machine. I mean, he could fight the father as, as, I mean, as he was fighting for his life. So we tried like to protect him. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, it's very powerful, like when he tries to escape the rich family house, where they work. I want to tell all of you that if someone has a question, uh, I'm open to bring out the microphone. So, there we have one. I don't know, if, do you hear me like this? You can tell me, if it's short, you can tell me and I can tell it the microphone. Okay, great. Uh, no, I was thinking it was really good. I really liked it. And I, Thank you. And it, I was interested in, because there were not a lot of women characters, and it was mainly about the relationship between a son and a father. But I was wondering how, how do you think the, because you also said that the boy grows to become a man. Do you think, how do you think of the masculinity that is portrayed to the boy? Like, do you think it's harmful, or do you, how did you, because it's in the focus, I wondered, like, if you have some thoughts up around it. So the question is, how do you think about the masculinity and the male portraits in the movie? Well, um, the whole idea about the family as a title um, became really important for me in the moment that I made these two male characters to be marked by the absence of the mother. It's in, right in the moment when they actually and understand that they both are lacking the same is that this triangle of of love of 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 a family is it's completed from my point of view of course um, so I, I in Latin America and Venezuela is a is a country that has uh, this idea of of very matriarchal. Is that correct? That one, yeah. Um, so the story of a mother uh, trying to save his son would be like very natural. We make more. I mean, we know more stories about a father who is absent, who is not at home. So I really wanted to have these characters who actually felt like they were orphans. That, that affection is really missing in their lives. And what I try to do is to have the, this, the feeling of that person existed in their life, and the boy is the one who actually has more, um, who shows more of that, what is, in, 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 what is missing in his life. 
So the, the masculinity as, 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 a, as a force or whatever, uh, um, I see it more like, an, I mean, it's something that is mandatory for them. I mean, if you if you want to survive in a place like this, you have to be like really a man. But in the at the end, this father actually behaves like a kind of this. Um, I mean, he gets the this uh, role of, of of both things of becoming a mother and and a father in the archetypical way. But but did I, did it, did I answer your question? Okay, thank you. So, <clears throat> anyone else? Yeah. I was wondering a little bit about the, the way you saw the backstory, like, because uh, I, I sensed sort of in the subtext that the relationship almost felt like a new one. Like the dad seemed to maybe not have the kid around for the years before this movie started. Like, how, how did you see that and how did you inject it into the movie? Because it was very subtle, but, but I, it was there. So. When I was like uh, researching stories like this, um, I always found comments and stories about these the kids becoming um, thieves and stuff. And, and and the answer was always the same: this is a lack of family, a lack of a mother. It's a mother who never took care of the of the of the, of the child or the children. Um, so I really um, tried to um, to make that you have that that feeling that they actually hardly see each other, and they are actually forced to know each other now. So there are like a, a, some hints that give you that, and it's my intention is that you start like thinking, okay, this boy actually grew up, I mean, on himself. And what if this violent act never, I mean, it would never happen? What would we leave of them? I mean, this kid, in maybe one year or earlier, would become the other one that he actually kills. So, um, I had I, I had hard uh, I worked hard in, in trying to get that idea of, of this is I mean this guy they really never see each other why well through seeing that this father is all the time outside but still I mean you have this little question that the boy makes in one and one moment okay and when you are not working where are you and that also I mean. For me, it's the moment when these two characters have a mirror in front of them. I mean, it's, there are like three uh, three scenes, and when the when the father actually beats his boss, it's the way that the boy would react. So that's the mirror part of the film. I mean, they really become the same, and becoming the same, they understand that it's the same thing that is missing in their lives. I'm not explaining too much. <laughs> I'm sorry. I mean, that's, that's your job, not mine. <laughs> I'm uh, when when you from this question. I think a very clear thing about this movie is that it's subtitle. It's nothing. You don't tell. You never over tell anything. You leave leave a lot of space for for us, the audience, to take it in and and build it together from our own ID worlds. I guess this is a choice that you've been considering a lot. Um, can you tell about that? Yes, I was, when I, I, I don't consider myself a screenwriter. I, I wrote this script and my, I come more from the editing actually. And I always tried to, to have a story that it was told through actions, not through uh, intellectualized ideas. I mean, so, because for me, these two characters are, wouldn't be, a, wouldn't have the time to intellectualize things. So I, I was all the time like trying to 
get ideas of, of um, actions and moments and situations where they can actually show themselves through behavior. And that made like a, 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 a very particular script. Um, during the editing, I was all the time like, okay, what is the work? I mean, what, do I need this sentence? Do I need this to express what I want? And it turned actually that it was really, uh, I mean, for me, it was a, more about feeling. I mean, I, if I felt that I could give that job to the audience, like to really see what was happening, but to see what was actually happening under me. And that was a risk, of course, when you try to tell a story like this is a, it's a risk. It's not, um, I mean, I, I wonder if uh, then like a big mass of audience will, will get all those details, the, the small details, but, but I think the, the film is what it is. I mean, it's not that complicated. It's the story of a father who has to react and save his son. And saving him, is they, they get together back again. More questions? Yeah. yeah. I have uh, one question. I hope you can hear me. The first question is, I have two questions. The first is, uh, how big uh, was your technical team when you shot this movie? Uh, how many people yeah, the were crew. Hmm? on the set? And the second question is, uh, why, how did you get to know where to co-produce it? <laughs> because uh, <laughs> Chile is the same almost the same kind of part of the world, the part of the world, but no way seems so far away. Yeah, so the first question was about the, the crew, the team on set, the size of it, so we can start there. Um, um, I, I wanted to have like a small crew, um, which is never, I mean, ne never is small enough, it's always too big for me. But it, we were around 25, the most of the shoes. Um, uh, in some like, complicated scenes, we had more. Um, but what I did is I created like a very intimate group uh, that was close to the cameras, meaning the sound uh, uh, crew, the camera crew, the, the assistant director, the actors and myself. So at the end, we were like nine moving all together on the time and, and um, uh, this doesn't happen so often, and so. But I had to convince my crew that it was going to work, even when I wasn't sure <laughs> at all. I mean, this is my first film, I mean, this is my my first long feature film. So I was trying things that I never had made before. So I had to convince them. The most of them were all the time saying, "Okay, this." Guy doesn't know what he's doing, but okay, I will try it. That's it. And the second question was, how did it did it become? A, Why Norway? A Norway production. Mm. Uh, from the really beginning, I wanted to the La Familia to be a co-production because it's not like a box office driven film in Venezuela, so I needed to be like a more international. Um, project from the really, really beginning. So we had a, a development um, stage that was really international. So we went to programs and we, we won grants in France and, and, and a regional program called Ivermedia. Then we were to European programs, one in Berlin, one in Cannes. And there was one produce, Norwegian producer that was supposed to work with one of our producers and they couldn't make it into that when he heard about this project and he read about it he got interested and they have this SOAR fund in Norway which is a, a, a fund for films for the, for, for the south part of the, of the, of the world and, yeah, but this guy was actually also working in Latin American films, so because he lived there for a while, so he understood really well what I was trying to do, and he came on board very early. He applied to the Sorfon, we won it, 
It was a, a keystone for our funding, actually, because we had only the Venezuela in that time, and there's a, a very complicated situation with Venezuelan money. So um, that allowed us to to have more access to international crew and services. There are not too many, but and then we had the the Latin American co-production. That's how, why it's Venezuelan, Chilean, and Norwegian. Thank you. Uh, and I see it's time up. So I will finish up with the last question about the future. Uh, what's your plans? What's coming up? Well, my plan is to try to keep making films. I have a, a new story developing in the time I had, which is not that as much as I would like to. I'm also producing some of the directors. And I'm an editor, so I, I have my hands in very different things. Plenty of jobs. And I have uh, two children, a family, and living in Venezuela. That is, <laughs> is, a, is a weird kind of fevers at the moment. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you all for being here. Thank Thanks. you so much. Thanks for coming.